Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest disc in Paige Pierce's lineup with Discraft. We're going to take a look at the drive. Also, pre-orders are live for the drive, which we'll be releasing on April 26th, so be sure to go pre-order yours now. For the flight numbers, the drive is a Speed 11 driver with a Glide of 5, Turn Negative 1, and a Fade of 2. But let's jump on in, taking a look at the profile and the feel. First for the profile, this is a very slender driver, very sharp nose, a gradual shoulder, and then a very flat flight plate. This thing feels very, very shallow, which means for like a player like myself that has very small hands, I can get a really comfortable grip, which will lead to a lot of very confident throws. And with the gradual incline of the shoulder and that very flat flight plate, this is extremely comfortable when it comes to forehand. Now in this ESP plastic, as you can see, there's a decent amount of give and pretty good flexibility to the drive, which just means also as well for backhand, I can easily manipulate the top of the flight plate so that way I can get a good pinch between my thumb and pointer finger so that I can feel confident with my grip and just know I'm going to get consistent releases and plenty of snap. I'm not going to lie, for my game, the feel of the drive is incredible. Backhand, forehand, it feels so good to me. So if profile and feel out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the flight. To start, I mean, all discs do fly differently depending if you're throwing with low power or high power, a lot of torque or not a lot of torque. However, I really feel like it's magnified with the drive. When thrown at slower speeds, the drive has absolutely no turn at all, in fact has a very hard finish at the very end, which means for slower arm speed players, this is going to be a very dependable driver if you're throwing out over OB or throwing a shot that you don't want to risk turning over. But as you start getting into the medium arm speed range, you're going to be able to have shots like this, very effortless flexing shots that's going to get a bit of turn in that mid-flight, and then again, to have a nice stable finish at the end, but as again you get faster arm speed that hyzer finish is going to be less and less and less and will finish on a much straighter angle while then the very big arms are going to be able to use the drive as a controlled turnover disc that is going to at least level itself out so that way it doesn't necessarily turn into an incidental roller but that also means you'll be able to work the drive on a lot of different lines the faster that your arm speed is. So this is truly a disc that I feel the faster your arm is, the more use you're going to be able to get out of the drive. It does have decent amount of late stability and a decent amount of high speed or early flight torque resistance. For myself, when it comes to backhand, I don't necessarily have the fastest arm speed. Yes, I know, that's a shock. And because of that, I just really can't make the most out of the drive when it comes to backhand. However, where I really, really like the drive is on these forehanding shots. I get a lot of extra torque on my forehand, and I can get these nice effortless flex shots. And it does have a decent amount of glide to it, so as long as I can control the angle of release and the height properly, I can get some really good forehand hand shots with the drive. And as we'll see shortly in the course usage, that ability to get just a little bit of turn and get those nice flexes with a good stable finish for us medium arms is perfect for wooded golf and to hit those flex shots around an obstacle. And speaking of the course usage, let's go ahead and take a look and see how I use the drive out on the course. And depending on your arm speed when it comes to backhand and or forehand, you're really going to be able to get quite a few different uses with the drive. First, this is just a very open hole for a lefty. It's a stock hyzer. I do have that one tree off onto the left hand side. So I know I want something that is not going to turn. And again, with my slower arm when it comes to backhand speed, I have no worries at all that I'm going to yank it and turn it into that tree. I can just throw it flat, let it ride out straight, and then just have that really nice strong hyzer finish. On this next hole, you do have quite a bit of trees on the left-hand side and also that sloping hill that falls away to the left. You do have a tree on the right, but it is pretty open. So righty Stockheiser, I go for the flexing forehand and I try to throw it with a little bit of turn so that way I know it's gonna land flat and not ride down the hill. For this next hole, you do have a gap you have to hit. You have two trees just off the tee pad and a bunch of guardian trees just in front of the basket. You do have your pick. Do you wanna go hyzer? Do you wanna go anhyzer? forehand or backhand. I'm going with the lefty flex because there's so much open space as you get out of that initial tunnel that that way I can just let the drive work its way back at the very end of the flight. 
Now this is a much more technical hole. You do have that one tree on the left hand side, a bunch of trees as you get closer towards the basket and a low ceiling on the right. You can go for the wide lefty route or you can keep the disc low and try to take that righty route underneath all the limbs. And trust that it's going to stay level and have a forward skip. By the way, how does the drive fare in the wind? Well, this is into about a 15, 20 mile an hour headwind and I'm gonna keep it on a bit of hyzer. So that way you can see it gets a lot of turn even when thrown on hyzer. So yeah, I would not trust this flat at all in the wind. I am going to be putting it on hyzer because if I do throw it flat, look at how much turn it has. The only reason it's hyzering back there is because it was a downhill shot. Now when it comes to lefty lines, I wanted to pit the driver against other popular Discraft Speed 11 molds like the Surge SS, the Surge, and also the very overstable option of the Scorch, the ever so famous ESP MJ Ledgestone run. If you follow this channel, you know just how much I love that run of Scorch. So when I first heard of the drive, I thought it was going to be the Surge SS replacement because Paige Pierce loves the Surge SS. So that's what I was thinking was going to be. However, as you're seeing from these lefty lines, it's not as understable as the Surge SS, but it's not quite as overstable as the Surge. It's kind of meets in the middle, which I do like because that means for backhand, I know it's going to fly very similar to the Surge. And then when it comes to forehand, I know it's going to be much more workable and I don't have to worry about it turning over too much. So out of the box, if you're looking for a much more workable version of the Surge that's not as understable or touchy as the Surge SS, the drive might just be what you're looking for. And with the Surge and Surge SS being difficult to find, if you love Speed 11 discs and say you like the Scorch but want something with just a little bit more overstability, the drive is a great option. However, when it comes to that MJ ESP Scorch, it is not nearly as overstable as you can see. This Scorch is in a league of its own. It is truly a different disc. All right, everyone, so that is the Page Pierce Drive. Now, if you want to get a drive for yourself, they are coming out very soon, so mark your calendars. April 26th, they will be dropping. And when they do drop, be sure to visit GreatLakesDisc.com and use that promo code LEFTY at checkout. That way, you're going to save 10%. You're supporting Great Lakes Disc, and you're also helping supporting the channel. Greatly appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, smash that like button. It really helps the channel out and helps with those YouTube algorithms. I greatly appreciate it. Also, if you want to, feel free to go ahead and follow me over on Instagram as well. I appreciate all the support in making this channel what it is. Thank you all so much. And until the next one, keep banging chains.